Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man here at the National Association of Broadcasters or NAB Show 2024 in Las Vegas. This trade show takes place every year and features thousands of vendors showcasing new broadcast technology. In this video, I'll show you advancements to broadcast TV, both on the transmitting and receiving side, especially with ATSC 3.0, the new over-the-air TV standard. I first stopped at the Road and Schwartz booth. The company manufactures broadcast transmission equipment for TV stations. If you watch TV over the air with an antenna, chances are some come from a transmitter made by Rode and Schwartz. I found this booth incredibly interesting. It's the 5G Broadcast Collective, which operates an experimental 5G TV station in Boston. The concept is to use the same 5G protocol from smartphones to broadcast video and data services instead of using ATSC 3.0. The demonstration showed mobile phones picking up a 5G video broadcast with an emergency alert that stays on the screen until it's dismissed. A lot has happened with ATSC 3.0 over the past year. It's still a work in progress, but has some potential. Here are a few things vendors in the industry are working on with the new over-the-air TV standard. The Run3 TV app for broadcasters was on display. This app, built into all next-gen-enabled TVs, is used by over 100 TV stations nationwide to offer advanced features with ATSC 3.0, including on-demand content, weather, and the ability to start a program from the beginning. In fact, NBC recently enabled these features on their stations in New York, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, and Miami for those of you who live there. Next to the Run3 TV app display was the Play Anywhere app. This concept, which is not yet released, offers interactive features on next-gen TV. Examples include purchasing products right on your TV, sports betting, giveaways, and hosting a watch party with friends. While all these features can technically be done on a smartphone, which most people have at this point, the concept is that they are integrated directly into a TV set, bringing broadcast TV into the 21st century. Five ATSC 3.0 set-top boxes were on display in the booth, some of which are currently available for purchase and others to be released sometime in the future. The Velo set-top box made by Shift to Stream offers integration of streaming apps like Netflix and YouTube. We have different applications. As you can see, we have Netflix and Disney+. Plus. Uh, you can also program them directly on the remote. Press one button and go right from the broadcast over the air to the over the top. I'm told the unit is expected to come on the market sometime in the third quarter of this year with a suggested retail price of about $100 for the single tuner version and $130 for the dual tuner version. This set-top box made by Stavix seems a bit more basic, but I do like how the remote actually has numbers on it. The suggested retail price for this is about $90. The ATSC 3.0 smartphone from Sankia Labs was on display again as it was last year and even back in 2020. I'm not sure if this will ever make it to the market. <coughs> Vaporware. Who said that? This QE device from last year has been rebranded as Carousel, now in a partnership with AT&T Business. It integrates next-gen TV, video, and data through Bluetooth into a smartphone. Here's a quick demo. So there's your video. It's right, right on the back. It's right on the back. And then, when you go like this, you can minimize it, and so it goes into a little window. And so this screen here, is for the data casting part. Scores, you know, it's, it's like this data is embedded in the video stream. So this is, this is truly interactive TV because you can watch the TV here and see the scores and the rosters. A few TVs in the booth displayed HDR content now available over next-gen TV. These maps in the corner represent where ATSC 3.0 has been deployed both in the United States and worldwide. Those of you living in Canada, experimental broadcasts are taking place there. Right outside the next-gen TV booth was a booth by the company CNJ Times with a few ATSC 3.0 set-top boxes and a smartphone TV tuner dongle on display. The company tells me they are in the process of obtaining certification from the A3SA, which is not a cheap and easy process. Should these devices never make it to the market, it's proof that the A3SA is gatekeeping devices that would otherwise be available to the consumer. Telvis had a booth with products both for broadcasters and the consumer. These devices monitor the signal of a TV station for the broadcaster and can even send an alert by text message if something is wrong. 
This ensures that a given TV station remains on the air without disruptions. Most of the consumer products on display were about the same as last year, so I took the opportunity to interview the engineer of one of the best antenna companies out there. So I'm here with the engineer of Televis, Javier, to ask him a few questions about their antennas. I'm sure a lot of you are aware of all the Televis products out there, and I figured to make a quick video about this. How are you doing, Javier? Hey, Tyler. How are you, man? Good to I'm see you. I'm doing pretty good. So tell me a little bit, bit about your company and why you think your antennas are a little bit different than the competition. So Televis has been making antennas since the 50s. I would say uh, I would summarize the main differences in three aspects. The first one is these antennas are commercial grade quality, so they're very well built. They're really designed to fit entire buildings, MDUs and stuff like that. The second one is the built-in technology. Uh, very good pre-amplifiers they have built in with all the filtering already added to them and uh, automatic gain control to make sure they don't over amplify or under amplify. And the third one is all of them are really well designed for the current frequencies. So with antennas, uh, as we all know, the bigger the antenna, the, the higher gain you're gonna have. But once that is out of the question, at a given footprint, you can do a good design or a bad design. With these antennas, we can guarantee you that at, a, at any given size, uh, we're making the most of the footprint available. One of my favorite things about your antennas is the built-in preamplifier with automatic gain control because, you know, if you buy a passive antenna, it's not to say it's not going to work, but there's a question of what amplifier do I get? Is it too much amplification and not enough? And I, I noticed just, you know, your antennas taking that whole, like, unknown confusion out of the equation really helps the consumer. Yeah, absolutely, and that's always been part of the idea behind the design. Very typically, you're going to need a preamplifier anyway to overcome uh, cable losses, you know, uh, bad connections, uh, splits, and stuff like that. And this takes the you know the guessing out of the equation for the end user, and not only that, also compensates for mistakes in installation. More importantly than that, and and at the bottom of this entire design decision is, it really helps the system maximize the uptime. Uh, because you're gonna get, you know, you're gonna get leaves come out, and then the preamplifier needs a bit more juice. You're gonna get an overcast day when the antenna may, you know, could use a little bit more gain. And these amplifiers are gonna do that for you all the time. Is there anything in particular that your company is working on, on the consumer side? I know you guys do a lot of cool things on the broadcast side. Um, and if there aren't any products that you're currently working on, you can mention maybe the thing behind you, the marketing that you're yeah. doing now. Well, yeah, we're, we're coming out with a marketing campaign you're gonna be seeing in YouTube, TikTok, if you use that, Instagram, uh, and all the social media platforms for e-commerce. But yeah, we're working on a few things. There's a couple antenna uh, designs being worked on. Uh, there's gonna be a redesign of a couple models. There's a suburban uh, new unit that's coming out. And also we're working on the second generation of our SmartCom combiner, yeah. I gotta say, it's really cool to have someone like you, Ryan Telvis. You're a fellow antenna nerd like myself. Yeah. You know, you, we're, we're both passionate about free over the air TV and constantly over analyzing all these reception reports and stuff like that. Yeah. That's the kind of person that needs to be running an antenna company. I'm not, you know, downplaying any other, you know, person in a different antenna company, but you are definitely kind of like me when it comes to like over the air TV. Oh, absolutely, Taylor. But, and you know, for better or worse, that's who we are. We're an engineering company, not a marketing company. You know, we probably could sell a lot more antennas if we were otherwise, but we really care about the product, the performance. And what suggestions would you have for anyone who just has reception problems with any antenna? What's the first thing that you think they should do? Yeah, the first thing I would always recommend uh, customers do is try to contact a professional installer. Uh, you know, over the air television is can be tricky, depending on the situation. And, uh, you know, if you have a good antenna installer in your area that knows what he's doing, they know what kind of equipment they need. They have the right tools for the job and you know, measure your signals. That may cause you a couple of bugs, but it typically uh, removes a lot of frustration from, from, from the whole antenna proposition. So speaking of antenna installers, we want to elaborate a little bit about the difference between free over the air TV in the United States versus overseas, keyword antenna installers. Yeah, that, that's a huge difference, right? Uh, so in, in um, the vast majority of the markets where we're active, and we ship products to over 100 countries, these, uh, these products are not sold to the, to the end user. The same way in the US you call a plumber when you have an issue, and they come to your house and they fix your bathroom. There, you want to install an antenna, you call an antenna installer. This is not simple stuff for somebody that doesn't know anything about RF, anything about OTA, they don't know what a decibel is, to go out you know, to a Walmart, buy an antenna, 
couple of leads of cable and expect it to work well. So that's why we always encourage them to go to, to, to go to a professional installer. And that's the main difference we see. Other than the penetration of the of you know of OTA reception in each country, which might be different. Some places is 10% or 20% like in the US, some places can be 90% like in Italy. Uh, but the main difference is uh, an end user market, you know, like a consumer device versus a professional market. Yeah, and that's something that I learned recently from you. I think that was really cool. I never thought about overseas that, because I'm just so used to everyone kind of setting up their antennas on their own. And take it from me, I spent years messing around with this stuff before I kind of figured it out. I'm still learning some things. Is there anything else you, you want to say that maybe I forgot to ask you? That's all. Well, thank you, Tyler, for having us. Uh, I would refer anybody that's interested in our products to reach out. Uh, we do pick up the phone, maybe not immediately sometimes, but we do the best we can. And we always do our best to try and help folks, you know, select the right antenna, advise them in the right direction, tell them what they need to do, and, and recommend as best we can. So do not, you know, do, do not be shy to reach out to us. Well, thanks for all your company does for free over-the-air TV and viewers in the United States. Thank you so much, Tyler. Thank you. So that's about it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I just noticed that I didn't pick the perfect location to do this stand up at. It's right around the corner. So you're gonna see people walking like directly behind me, which is kind of funny. I guess it makes good content, but uh, I appreciate you guys watching this video. Let me know what you think about it and what you would like to see in the future on the YouTube channel. Cause I definitely like making these kind of videos where I travel on location and cover things that are a lot more interesting than just me sitting in my studio talking about things. And look, I'm actually in Las Vegas now. Almost ran into that one, one right there. So uh, thanks again for watching, and you guys all have an awesome day.